Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Paul's Collectibles. Like so many of you, I was glued to The Mandalorian last year. And at the end of the season, towards the end at least, this guy showed up on screen. The Imperial Remnant Mortar Trooper. And I thought, I gotta make that helmet. I saw online how somebody else had done it and it gave me encouragement. He gave me some advice and I thought, that's it, I'm gonna give it a shot. I shopped around online and I eventually found an incinerator trooper, Hasbro, over at Brian's Toys, so I picked that up. The great thing about these Black Series helmets is they're sturdy, they're good quality plastic, they come in a bunch of different pieces to make it easy to mod, and they're only about $100. So this was what I used as a template to make the mortar trooper helmet. As you can see, it comes in these three plastic pieces. You just take it out, unwrap it, and you're pretty much gonna be ready to go. I concentrated on the face piece to begin with. The ports at the bottom are in tabs, and they just kind of pop right out with just a little bit of finger pressure. So that was one less thing I had to worry about taping off or dealing with. I was gonna take the whole helmet apart at the top, but I decided not to. The bottom piece doesn't need any work, so we immediately started in on the dome piece. I took some of this painter's tape that I had lying around and I began meticulously and carefully taping off the areas that I did not want yellow paint to get on. This is the part of the entire build process that is meticulous and boring and tedious, but it's the most important step. I then wrapped the rest of the helmet after I taped off the stripe on top with these blue shop towels. You can use anything, paper towels or whatever, and I was ready to go. Then I used Rust-Oleum Gloss Marigold, this ultra cover. I didn't have to sand or do anything like that, just taped off the helmet and I started spraying. The key here is to keep the spray light and airy so that you don't get any runs or streaks because you don't want to do that. I let it dry and while it was drying I began the incredibly tedious and boring work of taping off the faceplate. Here I cannot stress enough how taking your time and making sure that you do really really detailed and meticulous work will pay off in the end. It's boring and it takes forever but it's really important. You can use an X-Acto knife to cut out some of the over taping specifically in the grill part. It's just nearly impossible to tape that grill perfectly without having to use the X-Acto knife to either press the tape back or cut some of it off. But every five minutes you spend in pre-work will save you an hour in trying to fix it. Then I used the shop towels once again to tape off the rest of the helmet, made sure that it looked like no spray would be getting through, and I was ready to move on. I unwrapped the dome piece by then to see how the yellow tape came out or the yellow paint and I was very happy so I went ahead and started lightly coating the face as well. Now as with any spray paint or aerosol you want to do this in a ventilated area preferably outside. You may even want to wear a mask but as you can see I'm not wearing a mask here but I'm outside. Then comes the very satisfying part of getting to rip off the tape and seeing how your work on the faceplate came out. Next up, I had to use the X-Acto knife to get the tape out of the grill area. And this was another tedious, meticulous process. But like I said, taking your time, being really deliberate and careful sure does pay off in the end so you don't have any huge mistakes you have to fix. It's easier to get the paint on than it is to get it off, that was for sure. And it came out not too bad. You can see some red areas here, but we're gonna fix that a little bit later. The next day, after I let it dry overnight in the garage, I replaced the aerators or the microphone pieces on the front, and I started putting the helmet together because it was going to be easy to take the next painting steps that I was going to do with the helmet all in one piece. These Black Series helmets are so easy to put together and it went very quickly. And there you have it. Next, I took the same Rust-Oleum Marigold and I sprayed it into a plate so that it would pool up, giving me a palette of paint. I then took this small art artisan's paintbrush and I very carefully and very meticulously painted the red areas in the grill that had not gotten yellow paint because it's really near impossible 
to really perfectly tape off those areas with all the little nooks and crannies. But the painted on spray paint worked well. Next, I took this gray Deco Art water-based paint, poured it into a solo cup, added water to it and stirred it up. This was gonna be my weathering mixture. This is my first weathering job, so I didn't use black because I wanted to go slowly. The key here to weathering, and I've watched a lot of other videos on this, is to start slowly and moderately to get an idea of what your comfort level is gonna be and to get an idea of what your paint is gonna look like as you put it on. The less is more theory goes a long way. As you're painting this watered down gray paint on, you can dab it off with some more shop towels or paper towels or tissue paper or whatever you have laying around. And then you can continue to hit the areas where soot and smoke and dirt and carbon would naturally settle in on the helmet. Now this was my first weathering job ever and I was so excited with the way the yellow came out that I wanted to go slowly. Plus I used gray instead of black because I wanted his weathering to look more like the soot from the smoke that had settled onto his helmet from the mortar. And I just really didn't want to mess it up. And then I discovered somehow or another yellow paint had gotten on the back of the dome and I have no idea how that happened. So I got a significant amount of the gray and I started to weather it and as you can see here it drips down that's not a problem you just dry it up obviously you don't want any obvious drips because that's not how weathering would work but I dabbed some of it off and I realized that wasn't going to quite cover it up so I thought about what I was going to do there I grabbed up a sharpie marker and I started just lightly skipping around some of the areas on the helmet which would naturally gain some weathering from being bumped into storage cabinets or walls and things of that nature and as i dabbed on the ink from the sharpie i made sure to smooth it around with my fingers so that it wasn't so sharp and so precise making it look less on um, purpose then i grabbed some 400 grit sandpaper and i lightly sanded over some of the areas where i had done the pre-weathering i specifically grinded over or sanded over that yellow spot and it ended up looking like a burn spot when i was done which was pretty cool I then hit up some of the other Sharpie marks that I had made to kind of soften them up to make it look like maybe a blaster bolt or a rock had skipped across the front of his helmet or the top of his helmet. And then with some of the gloss on the helmet gone, but not too much, I then added a little gray lightly in there and it really brought out the character in some of the weathering that I had done. As you can see, I was so excited with the way the yellow had come out, I just didn't have the heart to gouge any of the yellow paint. So I kept his weathering really light and continued with that for an hour or two until I was happy with what I thought was going to be the right amount of weathering. And this is how it turned out. I love what I did here. I was really excited and it was a fun project. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for checking it out. And I'll see you on the next video.